Welcome back to the Minnesota State Mavericks Dynasty. And today, this is the final time I have to do this too, thank God. But today we are looking over the off season for this. This is kind of fast forwarded until about the live part where I actually realized my mic was turned off and I'm like, oh crap. Well, so that's about, that's gonna happen around 10 minutes into the video. So you guys got a little bit of time here to listen to this part. Um, we're just going over some stats. Um, we only had one receiver over a thousand yards and that was Alex Sanders. Um, and he is coming back for his senior season, so thank goodness for that. Um, we're going to have a lot of turnover into Season 8. Um, we know Aiden Cooper is no longer going to be there. He's been probably the greatest quarterback in school history at this point. He may not have broken like all the records, but I mean, I mean, he, he did win a couple Heisman trophies, so that's something. So, uh, Ryan Jackson was good on field goals, of course. Tyrell Smith had three kickoffs returns for a touchdown, so he was really good. Uh, Aiden Cooper also had 44 touchdown passes, 86 in his career. He almost had 4,000 passing yards, but he didn't. He only broke one record, which is passing yards in a game. Um, no receiving records this, to this year was broken, but sacks in a game and sacks uh, was broken. Um, so there's something for that. Um, coaching changes, we're not going to really do anything with that. Obviously, we're kind of trying to team build here. Uh, so... We're just kind of trying to go at least a little bit faster. We got a new offensive coordinator. Uh, so we got PJ Fleck, which is actually really good. Uh, I kind of like that move right there. So we're going to just go to players leaving. Tyrell Smith is one of them. Um, he's going to be put into Madden. So is uh, Aiden Cooper and uh, Jaden Griffin. They're all going to be put into Madden um, for the next upcoming season of the Bills franchise. So I'm going to try and replicate their stats as close as I can. Um, and try and see if they're, you know, going to be anywhere useful in Madden. Because I know, like, sometimes when you translate a person, a uh, player from Madden to from NCAA, like their stats drop dramatically. So they got a lot of work to do. Um, I know Jaden's got some speed on him, so he could be a good speedy receiver. But we'll see how that goes. Um, again, I might, be, I may be able to draft him, but I might also have to trade him away or release them because they're just not good enough, or they just don't fit the system all that well. So, uh, on to the next one. Transfer requests, there are none. No draft results yet, obviously. So, we're going to move on here. And I'm still only a level 18 coach, which still is pretty good. So, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, we're not really too focused on recruiting, although, I mean, we've already got, like, a bunch of players signed. So, I'm not going to really give a, a hoot too much about it. Let's just go on to the next one, because I'm going to have to cut a bunch of players anyway. So, um, there is that part. Uh, we got four players that we that were on our radar supposedly that committed to other schools. Um, apparently, we had a few players commit to our team, which I don't know how, but they did, and uh, that's that. I mean, I don't know how they, that all works. I guess they had to walk on, kind of. Um, actually, well, actually, they kind of committed elsewhere, so that's good. I guess it's kind of a little glitch in the system, if you will. Uh, position changes. Um, coming up soonly here. Um, not really much of any changes to be made. Um, not big into the position changes all that much, especially since, you know, I mean, running backs can be super thin. So is wide receiver. Uh, Jonathan Henry might have to be a big key contributor to next season. No athletes to be heard of. Uh, kickers and punters pretty much going to stay the same. Um, may move a couple of corners over to safety just to get some extra real estate over there. Um, since we are running pretty thin on some positions, but, um, that doesn't mean they can't improve or anything like that. We got to kind of balance out the offensive line from right guard to left guard and stuff like that, just to give ourselves some balance, uh, on that side. We got too many corners. I feel like, so we're gonna have to cut a ton of players this coming season. I was, I'm just not looking forward to that part either. Cause it's always the toughest part. I, I don't know if I would actually like. You know, I would have to cut like the best player or the worst players per se, but I'd have to cut players based on like, you know, the, t the positions they play more so. Um, training results, those are coming up here. Um, I know we got a few over 80, we got a few over 85. John Tolbert and Julian Ernst, uh, not very good like skill wise, but they'll be useful in the system, obviously. A lot of good um, talent to go around still. Defensively, I think we've taken a huge step forward. Um, 
We just gotta do good in some like like secondary is looking really strong. We might actually be able to cover some players this year. I'm not sure. Um, Brian Washington coming into his own, getting a six point jump into a 72 overall. Uh, he'll be good uh, for a couple seasons when he's playing. Uh, so on to this part, the cutting players. We all know this is like the worst part of it. So I'll try and spare you guys a bunch of time here. Um, you know, we had seven, we had nine players to cut, which is always kind of sucky, not really fun at all. Um, so we got to find out which ones kind of like are like the the ones aren't going to really be used. Like if there's a freshman that's been redshirted and has been already jumped by another incoming freshman, they're not going to get playing time. So I'm not going to waste my time with them too much. It sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. So, it, it's one of those unfortunate circumstances. And, when, and you have also, like, two players battling for, for one position and they're about the same overall. It's like, okay, one of them's got to go, unfortunately. And you got to also make sure that they actually get playing time instead of wasting their time here uh, at MSU. And I just, that's just the fine line that you have to draw. Um, so, we're down to 74. We had to cut a couple more players um, right there in wide receiver. Uh, cut a center, which sucks. I hate cutting offensive linemen. Um, and then we got it down to 70 right there. Um, so now next part here. Um, I can't remember the next stage. I think it's like custom conferences and all that stuff. I think that's pretty much unchanged. Um, the playing games and all that stuff, all is unchanged into going into season eight. Um, I don't expect this team to do like on un another undefeated run. It's going to be kind of hard to do that. So, especially with how I'm going to be com uh, getting this conference, like this conference coming up, we got Wisconsin. Wisconsin's been pretty good. And also, you know, we got, we're going to have to set up like um, matches up, uh, matchups with like ranked teams. And one of them, we're going to see if we could try and get the number one team. Obviously, we're not going into season eight number one again. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous to do that. But we're still going to follow the criteria that we set ourselves up with in season one, which is just all a bunch of one-star players. Um, and it seems to be working out. I mean, we got to get rid of some of the JUCOs and all that stuff, and kind of, kind of pick nitpick our way through it. It's going to be kind of hard, but you know, we get it done almost every time anyway. We got to find ourselves a few gems and hope that we can land one that's going to, you know, become a stud. You know, one of those guys that's been overlooked and kind of like Aiden Cooper was. He was kind of overlooked and he turned into a 91 overall quarterback that was a heck of a quarterback. Tony Freeman might fall into that same boat. We never know. So, I just see right here, we got a few players up there that are jumping up in overall. Um, Andrew McNeil is another good one right there, 64 overall. Uh, he'll be really good coming in the next season. Um, I don't know about him being a full-time four-year starter, but, I mean, you never know. Uh, and right here, I think we're getting close to the mark here, but we're going to just go through here. This this is pretty much just we're redshirting a bunch of players now, just a lot of the freshmen. We can't do the wide receivers, though. We can only do one tight end um, and a few offensive linemen, but... Unfortunately, we cannot touch the wide receivers in this case, and it sucks. But it kind of has to be done so we can have some depth in that position. Um, yeah, it, it's one of those icky situations, you know. You got to do what you got to do. Uh, custom schedules. This is where it's going to get a little interesting. We have number six Wisconsin in the uh, Big Ten. That's our only Big Ten ranked game. That might change later on in the season. Um, Purdue is also one of them. With, uh, Iowa could be one of them as well. Um, don't sleep on Nebraska too much either. I know they've been giving us quite the run for their money uh, in uh, the past couple seasons. So we're just looking through here, trying to find a good team to play here. And we did scroll across number one, Oklahoma. So we're going to play them in week two. Um, we're going to see here. We're not going to play number one, two, and three. We want to play Southern Miss. I think Southern Miss is a valuable team. I think they're... You know, a solid program. Um, and you know, it's funny enough, um, UConn was on our schedule. And funny enough, like, I hate to be a little bit of a spoiler, but they actually have, I've, I'm like six or seven games into the season already, but I'm not going to spoil nothing, but UConn's actually a pretty good team going into season eight. 
So, um, that's enough of me rambling. On to the live recording of this nonsense that is our schedule. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for understanding that I'm not like a perfect human being. So, uh, until next time, uh, until like until a few seconds. See you guys later. Bye. All right, so I'm an idiot. If you guys just saw the previous like two videos and a half, I was dumb and didn't even realize my mic was turned off. I don't know why it just turned off like that. Like, ah, uh, whatever. I'm not even upset. Just gotta do what I gotta do with it. So, um, just to take a look here, uh, at the at the team overall and the stuff we're dealing with this year. Conference outlook. What's our team overall? 75 and 78. Hmm. Man. Our offense took a huge dip, but our off our defense took a huge jump. We went from 70 we went down in overall by offense and overall. But defense, or defensive overall went up a lot. We're still projected to finish second, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. So, I don't know. I, I'm not going to lose sleep over it, I guess. So, we'll figure something out. Um, at least we're not projected to finish last. Big Ten East. Maryland had a bad year last year, too. I feel like that's gonna be another tough one if you're Maryland. So, hmm, this team's gonna be interesting to watch for sure this year. Um, depth chart—that's gonna be a big thing I gotta watch for. Tony Freeman's got—he's gonna be good. But I don't know how he's not gonna be he's not gonna be aiding Cooper good. Um, John Tolbert. Um, starting running back, obviously. The receiving core scares me. It really does. Brandon Scott, Eric Marshall, John Jacob Gorman, all these guys are coming in like ugh. Alex Sanders has potential, though. He might be the only weapon I throw to. Jonathan Henry's not bad either. Um, we'll see. Defensively, though, I think we'll be better. Not much better. We gotta, we gotta make sure our off our offense uh, stays on the field and does its thing. Cause man, we're gonna have a tough year if the offense can't stay on the field. Offense is taking a huge step back. Huge step back. But um, let's take a look at the rest of the recruiting and see who we're gonna go after. Um. Overall, unscouted. Ooh, what a bust that was. Okay, that guy's pretty good. Ooh, solid player here. Might be a might be a comedy we look at. Ooh, I like that one too. That one's not too bad either. Jordan Simpson, not bad. Ooh, bust. Ooh, what a jump for Kerry Moss. Team needs... I like Andrew McNeil. I do. I think he's going to be solid. I'm going to try and get him on the board. Same with Sean Smith. We need quarterbacks and we need we need them, we need them fast. John Brown seems like another type of player that I kind of need on my team because one, I mean, he's He's really good, but I feel like he'd be really good elsewhere, and not just not just fullback, you know. 
Um, we don't need a kicker necessarily. Uh, defensive tackle, we could we could definitely work on that. Um, James Har or Jason Harrison. We could go after a JUCO player. It's not going to be at the end of the world if we do. Probably not going to be as invested in him. Um, hmm, a center. We could definitely. We always could use more offensive line help. Sam Pope. Our receiving core is super thin. Offensive line help again. We could use that again. Our corners are young, but we only need one real one at this point. Jordan Simpson. Um, do we need tight ends? Not really. We could use a defensive end. Do we have any D tackles? I think we're running pretty thin on those. Yeah, we could. Uh, he wasn't really that impressive. We, we're going after one already, so we're, we're already invested in one heavily. So, outside linebacker. Oh, yeah, we definitely need one of those. Let's put let's put it on attention our attention on people that we really need to focus on. That seems like it's good enough. Anybody on our Heisman watch? Nope. Jason Smith again. Are you serious? He's coming back again? Of course, every USC quarterback's on this list. Preseason polls, where do they have us ranked? Not in the top. Th oh, we're 31. That's not bad. That ain't too bad at all. Winning against Oklahoma puts us in the top five. <laughs> um, that ain't going to happen, though. I, I guarantee it. Um. Man, this schedule is looking pretty. This pretty rowdy schedule here. Uh, <laughs> Michigan at 22. Washington State at 44. Who's the worst team in college football? Maryland's in the top 100 at least. Wouldn't be surprised if you. Oh, UMass is at 115. I was about to say I wouldn't be surprised if UMass was dead last. Iowa State at 114, UNC Charlotte at 126, Texas State, Wyoming, Arkansas State, Buffalo, Akron, and UNLV all in the top bottom, all in the bottom ten or six or seven, 120 or worse in the FBS. That's pretty bad. Um, hmm. <laughs> Championship contenders. Well, we're nowhere, we're nowhere near it. Um, 124, 112, and 61. We're 31st right now, so I guess we'll take it. Whatever. Not a big deal. We have an outside chance. I don't think we're going to win a national championship this year, guys. But we're still going to have a lot of fun with this dynasty. Next week we take, or next game we take on Oklahoma. We're going to simulate to that week. And uh, we will get ready for what is supposed to be an, a highly anticipated uh, first game of a brand new era in Mankato. So, with that being said, of course I was done being an idiot and not recording my voice through any of the last two videos, two and a half videos. But, 
Uh, you still got to see some old post commentary from me, which is not something that I would rather do. But it is what it is. We all make mistakes. We're all not perfect. But it is, again, it is what it is. So um, with that being said, of course, my name is Sim with Vengeance. And you guys have been amazing as always. Thank you for all your support and all your love and care for that you guys do on your videos. Making sure you guys drop in them likes and subscribing for your first time viewers. Consider subscribing if you are new though, please. Like, please do. And you won't you won't miss a video. Click the little notification bell. Check out my shop. Check out the little join button if you want to become a member in having a say on the channel. Until then though, my name is Tim with Vengeance and you guys have been amazing. Hey.